الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآله وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم في بيوت أذن الله أن ترفع ويذكر فيها اسمه يسبح له فيها بالغدو والآصال رجال لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة يخافون يوما تتقلب فيه القلوب والأبصار صلوا على محمد وآل محمد The 15th of the month of Ramadan marks the birth anniversary of Imam Al-Hasan Al-Mujtaba alayhi salam The first grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi and the son of Amir Al-Mu'mineen and Fatima Al-Zahra Imam Al-Hasan is the second Imam of Ahl al-Bayt and he played a very crucial role in the early development of the religion of Islam with his grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi after his grandfather and during his Imamah because Imam Al-Hasan is the second Imam of Ahl al-Bayt. And the role that Imam Al-Hasan played is very important. And oftentimes, we the followers of the Ahl al-Bayt and those who do not follow the Ahl al-Bayt do not appreciate the significant roles that Imam Al-Hasan played. Now, when, is the, when it is those who do not follow the Ahl al-Bayt, you don't expect any better. However, we see that even those who follow the Ahl al-Bayt, they don't know much about Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam. They don't appreciate the Imam alayhi salam for who he was and the important roles that he played in society at that time. Imam al-Hasan was born in the holiest of households, in a house that is purified by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A house that Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِّرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا Allah removes all evil and purifies this holy household, the household of the Ahl al-Bayt alayhum salam. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the ranks of the Ahl al-Bayt this house that is elevated and brought closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a spiritual elevation where Allah says in the Quran fi buyutin adhin Allahu an turfa'a wa yuthkara fi hasmuh there are homes there are buyut that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has elevated Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates why because the name of Allah is remembered because the name of Allah is constantly remembered in these homes. فِي بُيُوتٍ أَذِنَ اللَّهُ أَن تُرْفَعَ وَيُذْكَرَ فِي هَسْمُهُ يُسَبِّحُ لَهُ فِيهَا 
بالغدو والآصال رجال لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله Why? Because within those homes are individuals who are never brought away and distracted from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are these homes? What are these buyut that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to? They ask the Prophet, they ask the Prophet, what are these homes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi buyutin adhinallahu an turfa' He says, Masajidullah, they are the, home, the places of worship. They are the Masajid. And then one of the companions, he stands and he points to the house of Amir al Mu'mineen and Fatima al Zahra. And he says, Is this one of those homes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates in the Quran? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. First he was asked, which homes are they? He says the Masajid. And then he, they asked him, what other homes? He says the homes of the Prophets. And then the companions of the Prophet, they asked Rasulullah, is this one of those homes? Rasulullah says, this is the best of those homes. From amongst the best of the homes, even better than the homes of the Prophets of Allah. So this is the atmosphere that Imam Al-Hasan salam was born in. In a home, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to be elevated where the grandfather of that home is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. The father is Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib and the mother is the loving Fatima alayhi salam. What do you expect? What do you expect the offspring, the output to be from that type of atmosphere, from that type of house? Yes. You don't expect anything less than children like Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein and Sayyidah Zainab and Umm Kulthum. This is what this house produced a house of individuals who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is the house that is always remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the life of Imam al Hassan, the birth of Imam al Hassan alayhi salam. But of course, someone would expect that Imam al Hassan would be living with respect, with honor. But what took place was that the Muslim Ummah neglected the family of the Prophet, the very grandchildren of the Prophet, the very daughter of the Prophet, Amir al Mu'mineen. They were neglected immediately after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And Rasulullah. The family of the Prophets, they experienced difficulties and hardships that not any person would be able to endure. The difficulties and the challenges that they endured. Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, until today, there are some people who criticize Imam al Hassan. There are some people who give Imam al Hassan names and titles that are very demeaning. Some people, even from amongst the followers of the Ahlul Bayt, they say, Hussein, he is the warrior, he is the brave Shaheed. But Imam al Hassan, he went and he gave allegiance to Muawiyah. Or he went and he did bay'ah. He, did, uh, he came and he, get, he made a peace treaty with Muawiyah. And they undermine and underestimate the value of this great man, Imam al Hassan. Salam. And even some who were with the Imam, some of the followers of the Imam, they come to him. And they tell him, Assalamu alayka ya mudhill al Muslimin. Peace be upon you, O one who took away the dignity from the Muslims. Some of the people who were with him, they come and they do this. They treat him in this way. But of course, the Imams, as we know, as we believe and we accept the Imams, the Imams are first chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one. And second, every Imam. They have their own responsibility and duty. We can't sit and compare the Imams with one another. Every person, every Imam, they have their own duties and responsibilities during that time. But they were appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ فِعْلَ الْخَيْرَاتِ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِيْتَاءِ الزَّكَاةِ 
وَكَانُوا لَنَا عَابِدِينَ And we appointed them as Imams appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore the guidance comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we want to study the life of Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam, we would have to look at his life in three stages, in three categories. The first is from his birth until the death of Rasulullah and his mother Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. And the second stage is after the death of Rasulullah up until the death of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. And the third stage is the stage of his imamah, the stage of his leadership. Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam opened his eyes to see a grandfather like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. A father like Amir al-Mu'mineen and a mother like Fatima al-Zahra. What kind of children do you expect come out of this house? A household that is willing to sleep hungry for the sake of the poor, for the sake of the orphan, for the sake of the non-Muslim war prisoner. What kind of a household do you expect the Imam would be when he is taught the act of sacrifice and giving from the closest people to him. Imam al-Hasan, he opens his eyes and he sees Rasulullah, Amir al-Mu'mineen and Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. And Imam al-Hasan and Imam al hussein they are known to be the children of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa They are the children of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And Rasulullah, he himself says, he says, ذُرِّيَّةِ مِنْ صُلْبِ Ali. He says, all of my progeny, they are from Ali ibn Abi Talib. Right now, if you look, Rasulullah, he had daughters. And the only remaining daughter that survived and that had children was Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. And Allah destined that all of the children of Rasulullah today, how many Sayyids in the world are there today? How many progeny of Rasulullah? Allah tells Rasulullah, We have given you so much. All of the children, they are from Amir al-Mu'mineen and Fatima al-Zahra. All of the progeny of Rasulullah, Allah chose for them to be from that marriage, from that fruitful marriage. Even though Rasulullah had other wives, but they wouldn't have children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Fatima and Amir al-Mu'mineen to be those who carry the offspring of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam, he is the first grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He was born in the third year after, in the second or third year after the hijrah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi on the 15th of the month of Ramadan. On the 15th of the month of Ramadan was the birth of Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam. Rasulullah was anticipating the arrival of his grandson. This is his first grandson. He goes and he asks Amir al-Mu'mineen, what have you named your son? Amir al-Mu'mineen tells him, I will not name my son until you name my son. You are Rasulullah, you are like his father as well. I will not name him until you name him, O Rasulullah. And Rasulullah says, I will not name him until Allah names him. Allah is the one who will name him. So Jibra'il comes down to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and he tells him, congratulations for your first grandson. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala names him Shubbar. Why? Because Shubbar is the first son of Harun. Harun, the brother of Prophet Musa alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Amir al-Mu'mineen to be like Harun was to Musa. And tamini bi manzilati Harun min Musa illa annahu la nabiyya min ba'di. Rasulullah tells Amir al-Mu'mineen, you are like Aaron was to Moses except you are not a prophet after me. Why is this so much insistence that Amir al-Mu'mineen resembles Aaron? Why? Because Musa when he left, when he would leave his people, he would leave Harun in charge. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.
When Prophet Musa would leave his people, it would be Harun who would be in charge. And this is why Rasulullah wants all of the Muslims to know that Amir al muminin is just like Harun. And the children of Amir al muminin they are like the children of Harun, except they are greater than the children of Harun. So he tells him, his name is Shubbar. So Rasulullah tells him, but I'm an Arab. I need an Arabic name. So Jibra'il comes and he tells him, Allah orders you to name him Hassan. Hassan, this is the name of the grandson, the first grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Now of course, Imam al-Hassan and Imam al-Hussein, they both grew up under the supervision and love and compassion of their grandfather, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. They grew up in a household that was taught the essence of sacrifice, the essence of giving in the way of Allah. One day a man comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi in the masjid and the man tells Rasulullah, I'm hungry and I don't have a place to stay. And it was after a shot prayer. It was after the Asha prayer. So Rasulullah, he goes and he checks in his own home. He sends someone to check in his own home. Is there food in the house? They tell him there's no food in the house of Rasulullah. So Rasulullah asks the Muslims. He tells the Muslims, who out of you is willing to take this person as my guest? This is the guest of Rasulullah. You will get the thawab of taking in the guest of the Prophet. So Amir al muminin he goes and he asks Fatima al-Zahra, he goes and he tells her, do we have food in the house? She tells him, oh Abu al-Hasan, we only have enough food to put the children to sleep. Meaning you and I are going to sleep hungry. We only have enough so that the children are able to fall asleep. You know sometimes a child, they need to just eat a few bites so that they could fall asleep. So she says, that's all that we have just to put the children to sleep. Amir al muminin he tells her, Oh my dear Fatima, put the children to sleep hungry. We have the guest of Rasulullah. We have the guest of Rasulullah. So she goes and she puts her children to sleep hungry. And Amir al muminin comes and there is one, a little bit of food in front of him. He brings the guest, he puts him in front of him. Imam Ali sits in front of the man and there was a candle that was lit. There was a candle that was lit, Amir al muminin blows out the candle. And the man begins to eat in the dark. And Amir al muminin he makes the sounds of someone who's eating, even though he's not eating. He makes the sound as if he is eating so that that man does not realize he's eating alone. The man eats their food and he sleeps. The next day Rasulullah comes and he sees the family of the Ahlul Bayt, they are shivering out of weakness. Of course Rasulullah knows exactly what has happened. Rasulullah comes and he tells them, I have brought you a gift. Jibra'il has brought you a gift and that is a verse in the Qur'an. وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصَةً they are willing to give from something that is theirs. Now it's easy to come and give something if you have extra, but to give something that is yours, that is not easy. This is the household that Imam al Hassan was born in. This is the household that Imam al Hassan grew up in. In another story, they sleep hungry and they give to the poor, the orphan, and the prisoner. And in this story, they sleep hungry and Amir al muminin gives the guest of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Now, we're not surprised to see Imam al Hassan to grow and become Kareem Ahl al Bayt. To grow and become the generous one of Ahl al Bayt. He is the one who is Kareem. And of course, some of us we think that Kareem means only in the dunya, Imam al Hassan is Kareem. Yes, Imam al Hassan is Kareem in the dunya. He used to give. He used to give so much. However, we now, we turn to the generosity of Imam al Hassan, the shafa'a, the intercession of Imam al Hassan alayhi salam. And this is why we celebrate the birth of Imam al Hassan. This is why we hold on to the Ahl al Bayt alayhi salam. Some people they tell us, why are you so attached to the Ahl al Bayt? What's so significant about the Ahl al Bayt? First of all, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to show the love to the Ahlul Bayt My Lord did not order me to show love to anyone else other than Rasulullah and the Ahlul Bayt Allah says in the Quran, قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَى You know what this means? Do we understand the magnitude of this verse? Allah says in the Quran, I don't want anything from anyone to show appreciation to Rasulullah. Today, Rasulullah, he came and he guided us. He helped us. He saved us. He showed us the way. We have the greatest ni'mah. We have the greatest blessing that we have to take advantage of and we have to be proud of. And that is the ni'mah, the blessing of Islam. The blessing of Islam, this is a great blessing, my dear brothers and sisters. There are people, they go and they spend their money on drinking. They go and they spend their money doing things that are haram. Our religion teaches us to live a productive lifestyle. Our religion not only teaches us to connect with God, but to connect with everyone. Islam is a beautiful religion. Why is it a beautiful religion? Who do we have to thank? We have to thank Rasulullah for this, right? He's the one who guided us. So how do we thank Rasulullah? The Muslims at that time, they used to go and ask Rasulullah, how can we thank you? We want to thank you. You saved us. You guided us. You brought us out of the darkness. Rasulullah would always say, Inna ajri ala Allah. I don't want anything from you. My reward is with Allah. I don't want anything from you. They kept insisting and insisting and insisting until one day a verse came down from the Quran. O oh, Rasulullah, tell them, قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَى Say, I don't expect anything except love the Ahlul Bayt salam. What does this mean? This means that if you were to try to buy and pay off Rasulullah for the Hidayah, the only way that you could do so is by loving the Ahlul Bayt. What does this mean? That means that the value of the love for the Ahlul Bayt is as valuable as the whole message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa If you put them on a scale, you will see that the only way to pay off Rasulullah and show our appreciation to Rasulullah is by loving the Ahlul Bayt. No amount of money, no amount, no anything, nothing you do will be able to pay off that Risala and that message except when you love the Ahlul Bayt. This is why we love the Ahlul Bayt. Another reason we love the Ahlul Bayt because we don't find any role models like the Ahlul Bayt. Where do you find the generosity? Where do you find the compassion? Where do you find the knowledge? Where do you find the love for humanity? Except with the Ahlul Bayt and this is Imam al Hassan who was born and who grew up in that household. And this is why Rasulullah, he would show love to the Ahlul Bayt. Rasulullah does not only tell us, show love to my family, he would be the first person to show that love. One day, Fatima al Zahra, السلام, she places her children, Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein, in a red outfit. And they're coming, a thobe, a red thobe. They're coming and they're stumbling in the masjid. They're young children. They're walking in the masjid. Rasulullah is on the member. He's giving a speech. He's delivering the message of the sky, the message of the heavens. Rasulullah interferes and he stops. He comes down. He, he takes Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein and he begins to kiss them in front of all of the Muslims. Rasulullah is no ordinary person, my dear brothers and sisters. Rasulullah has a divine task. Ya ayyuhal Rasul, ballig. Rasulullah has to deliver a message. He can't interfere. He can't waste time by kissing his children here and there. But Rasulullah is trying to tell us that no. Not only do I love these children, you all have to love these children. Every single person must love the Ahlul Bayt. And this is why he says, Al Hassan wal Hussein, Sayyida Shabab Ahlul Jannah. Hassan and Hussein are the masters of the youth of paradise. Al Hassan wal Hussein, Rayhan Ataya min ad dunya. Hassan and Hussein are my flowers, they are my roses from this dunya. This is how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ordered the Muslims to love the Ahlul Bayt. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the Ahlul Bayt, including Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein to be of those in the Mubahala. We all know the story of the Mubahala. When the Christians of Najran, they came and they wanted to debate Rasulullah about God. 
about Jesus being the son of God. Allah tells them, إِنَّ مَثَلَ عِيسَى كَمَثَلِ آدَمْ خَلَقَهُ مِنْ تُرَابٍ ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ Tell them that the analogy of Jesus is like Adam. If Allah, if Adam is the son of God, then Jesus would also, excuse me, if Jesus is the son of God, then Adam would also be the son of God. Adam doesn't have a mother or a father. They kept arguing and debating and debating until Allah tells Rasulullah, the verse of Mubahala is revealed. فَمَنْ حَاجَّكَ فِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُوا أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ ثُمَّ نَبْتَهِلْ فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ Tell them, if you want to continue debating and arguing even after I have brought the facts and the truth to you, then now let us call our children and you bring your children. I will call our women and you call your women and we bring ourselves and you bring yourselves. Who did Rasulullah bring? Rasulullah in the mubahala he walks, he doesn't take any of the women in his life, he doesn't take any of the companions, he doesn't take any of the children in Medina. He takes Amir al muminin as the nafs of Rasulullah. Fatima al zahra as the woman of the Prophet, even though there were many ladies and women in the life of the Prophet, he only takes Fatima and he takes Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein. And these are the Ahlul Bayt. This is the purified household of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Now, of course, Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, he grew up in that household. From an early age, he was taught how to uphold the values of the religion of Islam. In one narration he narrates, he says on a Thursday night, on a Thursday night I would see my mother Fatima. I would see my mother Fatima in the mihrab praying. The whole night she is standing on her feet praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I hear her praying and praying and praying and the whole time I hear her praying for the neighbors. I hear her mentioning the names of the neighbors. This person and that person and this person and that person. So after her prayer, I come to her and I tell her, Oh my dear mother, I saw you pray for everyone except yourself. I never saw you, I never heard you praying for yourself. The whole night you've been praying for the neighbors. The whole night you've been praying for other people. He says, she tells me, Ya Bunay, Al Jar, Thumma Dar. Oh, my dear son, we, when we pray, we're going to pray for the neighbors and then we'll pray for ourselves. You know, this action, it might be very small, but now we understand why Imam Al Hassan and Imam Al Hussein sacrificed everything they had for the sake of Islam. Because their mother and their father also did. Because their mother, even in her dua, she was not selfish. Even in her prayers from Allah, she was not selfish. This is the upbringing of Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein. Imam al Hassan, from a young age, he used to go to the masjid and listen to the sermons of Rasulullah. He used to go and listen to the sermon, the whole sermon of his grandfather, Rasulullah. And then he comes home. And his mother, she places a chair for him. And she tells him, sit on the chair, oh my dear son. And he would sit or stand on the chair and he would deliver the same sermon of Rasulullah to his mother Fatima. The same sermon, he would memorize it from a young age and he would come and he would deliver it in front of his mother Fatima. So one day Amir al-Mu'mineen, Amir al-Mu'mineen, he comes and he notices his son, he's doing something. And every father, every mother, they're proud of this. So Amir al muminin is hiding behind the door and he's watching Imam al Hassan, a young child. He's saying the sermon of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. As soon as Imam al Hassan, who's a young child, he notices that Amir al muminin is there listening to him, he stays quiet. He stays quiet. She tells him, oh my dear son, continue reciting. He stays quiet. She tells him, continue reciting. He doesn't say anything. And then he tells her, Ya Ummah, qalla bayani wa kalla lisani la'alla sayyidi yar'ani. 
He tells her, oh my dear mother, in front of the most eloquent person, my father, Amir al-Mu'mineen, I am not able to speak. I need the support and the help from my father, Amir al-Mu'mineen. This is the household that Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam grew up in. Now, of course, this short phase, it ended very quickly with the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And the Ahl al-Bayt were marginalized. The Ahl al-Bayt were neglected. The Ahl al-Bayt were sidelined. This is the household of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And they began to see the difficulties and the challenges and the atrocities. But Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam, he had a very important role. Even though he was neglected and he was oppressed, Imam al-Hasan and the Ahl al-Bayt, they saw that they had a duty to uphold the values of Islam, even if that means credit was not going to be given to them. Because the one who does something for the sake of Allah does not look for credit from people. The one who does something for the sake of Allah anticipates the jaza and the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what the Ahl al-Bayt were. They never did anything for anyone. They never did anything for the people. Imam al-Hasan, he was always with his father, Amir al-Mu'mineen. And during the official leadership of Amir al-Mu'mineen, he was in support of his father, Amir al-Mu'mineen. As soon as the, the official caliphate came to Amir al-Mu'mineen, there was the battle of Jamal, the battle of the camel, where it was Imam al-Hasan who, who stopped the war. It was the actions of Imam al-Hasan that led to the stop of the war and it, it, led, it led to less damage. Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam, he went, the wife of the Prophet, she was sitting on a camel and it was surrounded by many men. It was surrounded by many men and she was telling people to fight Amir al-Mu'mineen, to fight Imam Ali. Now, if she gets killed, this is going to cause a problem. She's the wife of the Prophet. So, what are they supposed to do? The war has to stop because every second that goes on in the battle, Muslims are dying. Muslims from this side and from that side. They're being killed. So Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam, he's able to penetrate through that circle and he goes on the camel and he strikes the legs of the camel, bringing it down. Once the camel was brought down, that's it, the war came to a stop. It was the sword of Imam al-Hasan and the bravery of Imam al-Hasan that led to the stop of the war and stop of the battle. In the battle of Safin, Imam al-Hasan and Imam al hussein were also participating. But Amir al mumineen he doesn't see Imam al-Hasan and Imam al hussein only as his children. He sees them as the children of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. So he would keep Imam al-Hasan and Imam al hussein back. He wouldn't send them in the, front, in the forefront of the battle. He would go in the forefront. He would send his other sons. He would send Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. He would send Muhammad ibn al-Hanafiya. He would send the, his other sons. He would send them in the front of the battle. But Imam al-Hasan and Imam al-Hussein, he would keep them back. So one day, his other son, Muhammad ibn al-Hanafiya. Muhammad, the son of the Hanafiya, one of the wives of Amir al-Mu'mineen. He comes to him. He comes to his father, Amir al-Mu'mineen. And he tells him, oh Amir al-Mu'mineen, oh dear father, am I not your son? He tells him, yes, you are my son. He tells him, Hassan and Hussein are your sons and I am also your son, right? Amir al-Mu'mineen says, yes. Then he tells him, then oh father, why do you send us? Why do you send me in the forefront of the battle and Hassan and Hussein, you keep them back? He tells him, oh my dear son, you are, you are my son. You are like my hands. My hand, you are my right hand. I love you. You are my son. You are my hand. But Hassan and Hussein, they are my eyes. I protect my eyes with my hand. Hassan and Hussein are the sons of Fatima. Hassan and, Hassan and Hussein are the sons of Rasulullah. I do whatever it takes to protect my eyes with my hand. And Hassan and Hussein are my eyes. This is the love that Amir al Mu'mineen displayed to Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein. Now, of course, Imam al Hassan, he was the commander. He, was, he played a very integral role in, during the official leadership of his father, Amir al Mu'mineen. But on the 
19th of Ramadan after Amir al muminin was struck. And two nights later, Imam Amir al muminin passed away. The Imam, the official leadership by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to Imam al-Hasan. He's the second Imam of Ahlul Bayt appointed by Allah through Rasulullah and through Amir al muminin Came to Imam al-Hasan and Imam al-Hasan had a very difficult time. Some of the closest people to him, they betrayed him. Amir al muminin was killed in the middle of a crisis between one camp, Amir al muminin in Kufa and another camp of Muawiyah in Damascus. And Amir al muminin days before he was killed, he was ready to wage another war against Muawiyah. But then Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim struck Amir al muminin and Amir al muminin was killed. Amir al-Mu'minin had an army out ready to go out and fight Muawiyah, but he was killed days before the battle began. So now the Imama transferred to Imam al-Hasan and Imam al-Hasan inherited the Imama in a very turbulent time. The Muslims are at war. There's a civil war going on and now Imam al-Hasan is supposed to lead. But there was a problem. Those so-called followers of Imam al-Hasan they were not real followers of Imam al-Hasan. Just like they gave a difficult time to Amir al-Mu'mineen, they were giving a much more difficult time to Imam al-Hasan. And what Muawiyah began to do, he began to buy people. You know right now, as some countries, they come and they buy people, they give them money and they tell them, you know what, leave your values, leave your tradition, leave whatever, leave your religion. You see a lot of people doing that. Because of a few dollars, they're willing to sell out. They're willing to let go of anything that they stand for. There were people on the camp of Imam al-Hasan that did the same thing. And some of them were the closest people to him. One of them was Ubaidullah ibn al-Abbas, the brother of Abdullah ibn Abbas, meaning the cousin of Rasulullah, the cousin of Amir al muminin Abbas is the uncle of the Prophet. Ubaidullah ibn Abbas, he had 12,000 men. He was the general. He was the head of those 12,000 men. He goes... He goes to Muawiyah and Muawiyah gives him money and there was an agreement that as soon as the battle begins, they're going to hold Imam al-Hasan and turn him over to Muawiyah. Of course, Imam al-Hasan knew that because Imam al-Hasan has divine knowledge, divine intuition. He knows his people. He knows that these people cannot be trusted. So, he is forced to make a temporary peace treaty with Muawiyah. He is forced to make a treaty because the people with him, they're not, they are not sufficient. Now some people here, they come and they say, Imam al-Hasan is not like Imam al-Hussein. If Imam al-Hasan was like Imam al-Hussein, he wouldn't care. He would have went and gotten killed. He would have went and done until martyrdom, until he was killed. This is a wrong way to look at the things. First of all, we cannot compare Imam al-Hasan with Imam al-Hussein, just like we can't compare Imam al-Sadiq with Imam al-Kadhim, with Imam al-Baqir, with Imam al-Ridha. Each Imam has their own duties. You can't come and compare the Imams, and the Imams, they know exactly what their duty is. We can't come and try to differentiate between the Imams and say this Imam is better and this Imam is not better. No. Amir al-Mu'mineen, he had to come and give, he had to come and basically agree to the establishment at that time. Imam al rida he had to go and be the crown prince of Ma'mun. Imam al kadhim his father was killed and poisoned in the prisons of Harun. Imam al rida goes and becomes the crown prince of his son Ma'mun. What does this mean? This means that the Imam knows exactly what his duty is. My job is not to come and criticize the task of the Imam. They know exactly what their duties are and every Imam knows what they're doing. Second, Imam al-Hasan did not give up the position of Imama. Imam al-Hasan, he gave up the position of official leadership. The Khilafah, just like Amir al-Mu'mineen gave that position up. Amir al-Mu'mineen, he sat in his home for 30 years. They didn't give him a position of official leadership. Does that mean that Imam Ali gave up the position of Imama? The position of Imama can never be given up because it's a position by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is Allah who chooses who the Imam is. So similarly, Imam al-Hasan, he let go of the official power, but 
he did not give up the position of the imam because Rasulullah says in a famous and known hadith, Al Hasan wal Hussein imaman qama aw qa'da. Hasan and Hussein are imams, whether they uprise, whether they stand and take power, or they do not have power, they are imams. And they are the leaders and they are the masters of the youth of paradise. So Imam Al Hasan never gave up the position of the Imam. And third, it was that very treaty that Imam Al Hasan had with Muawiyah that led to the legitimacy of the Battle of Karbala on the day of Ashura. If it was not for, the, for that treaty that Imam Al Hasan signed with Muawiyah, Imam Al Hussein would not have been able to stand against Yazid. You see, several points in that treaty were all broken by Muawiyah. And that gave the legitimacy to Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam to stand against Yazid. And some people they come and they say, Imam Al Hussein, he's a revolutionary, and Imam Al Hassan is peaceful. That's not the case. Imam Al Hussein, he also did not fight Muawiyah for 10 years. 10 years after the death of Imam Al Hassan, Muawiyah was alive for 10 years. Imam Al Hussein did not fight him. After the death of Muawiyah, he came and he brought Yazid in an illegitimate way. It, brought, it went against the treaty, it went against all norms and all customs. Then Imam Al Hussein, now he saw that he has the legitimacy to come and stand against a man like Yazid. Otherwise, the Imams, they don't care about their own life. The Imams are not worried about their own life. They're not worried about power. They're not worried about authority. But the Imams, they don't want to do anything, which later on people are going to say that he went and he caused bloodshed for the sake of power. And Imam al Hussein, he did not go and cause bloodshed for the sake of power. But Imam al Hussein knew that he had a handful, less than a hundred men, that he could rely on, where Imam al Hassan did not have five men, did not have ten men, did not have a hundred men that he could rely on. They were going to go and hand him over to Muawiyah, and that would have been a greater disgrace. So, this is these are some of the lessons that we learn from Imam al Hassan alayhi salam. Now, of course, Imam al Hassan, one of the qualities that he is known for is his hilm. Hilm is the compassion. Hilm is forgiving someone that has hurt you. Forgiving someone that has wronged you. How many of us can do that? How many of us can forgive someone that has done something wrong to us? You will find this with the Ahlul Bayt You will find this with the Ahlul Bayt They forgave even their enemies. One day a man comes from Sham and in Sham, during the time of Muawiyah, they were, there was so much propaganda against Imam Ali and the Ahlul Bayt. That so much propaganda existed that when Imam Ali passed away, when Imam Ali was killed, some people asked, Ali ibn Abi Talib prays? They were shocked that Amir al-Mu'mineen prays. Because they heard that he prayed, while he was praying, he was struck on the sword. So some people said, Ali prays? This is the propaganda. A man comes from Sham and... He comes to Medina and he sees Imam al Hassan. So the man, as soon as he sees Imam al Hassan, he begins to curse at the Imam. He begins to use foul language at the Imam. And the Imam, he looks at him, he doesn't do anything. The Imam tells him, Ayyuha Shaykh, Adunnuka Gariban, Awla Allaka Shabbat. He says, Oh old man, oh Shaykh. I think you're a stranger here. Maybe you have confused me with someone else. And then he tells him, he tells him, fellow, if you need anything from us, we will come and give you. If you need money, we will give you. If you need a place to stay, we will give you. If you need food, we will give you. If you need a caravan, we will give you. If you need a horse or a camel, we will give you. Come to us, we will give you. The man was shocked. The man said, this is the same man I curse at him. And this is what he tells me. He tells me, if you need anything, come to me, I'll give you. The man began to cry. And he says, Allahu a'lam haythu yaj'al rasalata. 
He says Allah knows exactly to which kind of people He should make them those who are representing His message. Those who are the representative of the message. He tells him, you and your father were the worst people in my eye. Now, after what you did, you and your father are the best people in my eye. And the Qur'an talks about this, my dear brothers and sisters. If we follow these teachings in the Qur'an, we would be able to change the world, just like the Ahlul Bayt changed the world. Why did Rasulullah attract so many people? It's not only the sermons and the lectures that Rasulullah gave. It was the akhlaq of Rasulullah. It was the decency of Rasulullah. And yesterday, my dear brothers and sisters, when these non-Muslims came here and they saw, perhaps it was just a kind gesture from you, the food that they ate, the akhlaq, the, decent, the, ki- the decency and the kindness that they saw, that will forever change their impression of Islam. That's going to forever change their religion, change their impression. Someone could go and read a hundred books, it's not going to do anything. But one small gesture of kindness, that could change the whole world. And Allah says this in the Qur'an. Allah says this in the Qur'an. Allah says, وَلَا تَسْتَوِ الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةُ The good deed is not equal to the bad deed. وَلَا تَسْتَوِ الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةُ اِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ Such a beautiful verse. Allah says the good is not equal to the bad. So repel the evil with good because it will change a relationship of animosity into a relationship of love and compassion. فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ This person is going to love you. And the Ahlul Bayt are our role models. They are the ones who forgave their enemies. Imam al Hussein forgave al hurr bin Yazid al-Riyahi. Imam al Hassan forgave those individuals that were cursing at him. Those individuals that were not respecting him. He doesn't need to do anything. He's the grandson of the Prophet. But Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, he knows that he has to carry the high moral ground. And my dear brothers and sisters, as Muslims, as followers of the Ahlul Bayt, we have to do that as well. Even if someone hurts you, even if someone did something that you don't like, be patient for the sake of Islam. Be patient because you are the followers of the Ahlul Bayt And trust me, you will be able to change the world. You will be able to have a great impact on people all over. وَلَا تَسْتَوِ الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةُ اِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ This is Imam al hasan And we're not surprised. His father, was, his father and grandfather were sent as a mercy to mankind. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ If his grandfather was sent as a mercy to all of mankind, the grandson is definitely going to be someone who is forgiving, who is loving, who is compassionate with everyone. This is Imam al Hassan. One day, Imam al Hassan, he's riding a horse and he passes by a group of poor people, homeless people. They're working, they're sitting on the ground and they're eating. They see the grandson of Rasulullah, the grandson of the Prophet. He's riding his horse, he passes by him. They tell him, O oh son of Rasulullah, come and join us, come and eat with us. So Imam al Hassan, he comes down from his horse, he sits with them, and he says, Inna Allah la yuhibbul mutakabbirin. Allah does not like the ones who are arrogant, who are proud. Yes, even if they're poor, even if they're homeless, even if they don't have anything, I will sit with them. He goes and he sits with them, he eats a little bit of their food so that they don't feel embarrassed so that they don't feel upset. And then he tells them, listen, why don't you all come and eat with me? He goes and he takes them and he provides the best food for them. And he tells them, eat, please eat from this food. And he feeds them from that food. One day Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, he he passes by a farm and he sees a slave. He sees a slave, he has a piece of bread in his hand. He takes one bite and he throws some of the bread 
He throws it to a dog, a, hung, a hungry dog that's eating. He takes a bite and he throws to the dog. Imam al Hassan was astonished with what this man is doing. He's hungry, he's a slave and he's sharing his food with a dog. He's sharing his bread with a dog. So the Imam alayhi salam, he goes and he purchases the farm that that man, that slave was working in. And he goes and he purchases the slave that that slave was there and he comes to the slave and he tells him, you're a free man in the way of God. And second, this farm belongs to you now. He goes and he buys the farm and he buys the slave and he gives the farm as a, a belonging. It belongs to the slave now, the ex-slave now. Why? Because he saw a man who was generous. And the, the Imam alayhi salam teaches us through his generosity. And of course it is known that Imam al Hassan alayhi salam during his life, he gave away all of his wealth. خرج الحسن خرج الحسن عليه السلام عن ماله مرتين two times in his life he gave away all of his money and three times قاسم الله في ماله three times he gave half of his wealth who does this the one who believes in God the one who believes that everything that I have is from God so why should I not give if I believe that everything that I have is from God, then why should I not give? If God gave me this, God can give me tomorrow. God gave me today, He's going to give me tomorrow. Sometimes when we do not give, when we are afraid of giving, this is a sign of lack of faith. Why? Because we don't trust that God is going to give us tomorrow. We're afraid we're not going to have tomorrow. But the ones who give, they believe in God. That God is going to, just like God gave me today, God will give me tomorrow. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ziyarah and the shafa'ah of Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam and to have us learn lessons from the life of this great Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam. Once again, I congratulate you all on this auspicious occasion on the birth of this great Imam, Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi al-tahireen. Oh. Mm -hmm.